Hey guys, welcome back to the final episode in this series. Hopefully, this final installment will include some baby timber rattlesnakes. A brief review. In episode 1 and 2, we visited a couple of New York timber rattlesnake gestating sites trying to gauge how many pregnant, also known as gravid, female rattlesnakes were present at these locations this year. So during our initial visit to the first gestating site, we encountered several timber rattlesnakes, including this impressive male. But overall, I think only one or two were actually pregnant snakes. The following week, we checked out another gestating site on a lower ridge. Here we found additional rattlesnakes, a handful of which appeared gravid. And on the hike out, we stumbled upon this large but very complacent male. We begin this episode by first visiting the gestating site on the upper ridge. Coming up to the first cluster of rocks where we had seen that handsome male a couple weeks before, I was rewarded with these three large timbers coiled together. Okay, so I set up one GoPro there, and as they slithered away, or two out of the three slithered away, this black one is in shed, and it is a male. That yellow one was also in shed, a male. But that black, smaller timber, I'm not sure. It could have just been a female, a non-gravid female. About 50 feet to the north, at the main basking and gestating site, there were at least four timbers. A couple of them looked familiar from our previous visit, including the gorgeous black female. So check this out. We all know that snakes slither, but here is a good illustration that they can actually crawl also. Here is a peek underneath the slab. Notice the young adult in shed. If you have watched any of my previous reptile videos, you can see that I love setting up GoPros on time lapse from different angles. Now, it can be time consuming, but it often captures some great and revealing footage, and I highly recommend getting at least one GoPro if you are interested in observing the behavior up close and personal of your favorite reptiles. Hundreds of feet below, we returned to the lower ridge. Coming up to the first main rock, three timbers were tucked underneath, including the gravid black morph I recognized, but unfortunately, no babies. Heading over to the next rock, where we had found the shed and timber deep under last time, I encountered an impressive and familiar snake. A huge, I can already tell, it's a male rattlesnake. Look at the girth on this guy. I don't know, this is possible, the one that we saw lower down last week by the log. It is in fact the same animal. Now notice his opaque eyes, which tells us that he ventured up to the warmer rocky ridge in preparation for shedding. The sun is in and out of the clouds, and you can see now that the, that the sun is out, the contrast. And the contrast throws off the shape of the snake in a sense. And look at how difficult he is to see right now. The sun's briefly gone behind a cloud, and you can see he's more visible now. And watch, the, here comes the sun coming back out. He seems to just kind of melt away into the shadows there a little bit, or the contrast just throws off the whole form of the snake. Tired of my commentary, he eventually moved on. So I assumed encountering this male was going to be the highlight of the day. But just 50 feet away, this happened. Oh, wow, very nice. Look at this. We have some baby timber rattlesnakes. They scurried away, so what I'll do is set up a camera here, leave the area. The, I have seen babies here before, this is a gestating spot. Um, I just think that this goes deep enough that even though this will be in the sun the majority of the day, it just goes several inches uh, into the earth where it can maintain a cooler temperature despite the sun beating on the surface of the granite here. But this is exciting. All right, so if I recall, I believe this is the only, the second litter I've ever found officially in August. I suspected um, it would be early this year because we've had such a warm summer, in particular very, very warm nights. All right, I could just keep going on and on talking about this, so let's set up some cameras and then move on up to the main gestating site. So here is the footage of the babies 
on time lapse. Timber rattlesnakes usually give birth between late August and mid September. The babies, or neonates, are about a foot in length, chunky in appearance, and are dull gray with dark blotches. They will remain this way for about 10 days after birth until they are ready for their first shed. During this time, the mothers remain at the rookeries with their young. The main purpose for this is for the neonates to establish and familiarize themselves with their mother's or other adult scent. So when the young are ready to move out, they will follow the scent laid down to the population's overwintering den. Okay, so this structure right here is the hibernaculum for the population up on our ridge behind us. And what we've done is just briefly jumped ahead into the future. It is now the end of September and I see the first arrivals from the population. There are a couple in the cracks over here. One was trying to poke its head out here, but I startled it. There is maybe a two-year-old up above here, and just behind the camera, down below a little bit, is a nice black morph. So the goal for our babies up on the ridge is to make it to this overwintering den. All right, so now let's rewind the clock again a few more weeks and head back up to the ridge. A short distance from the den and literally right next to my time machine was this black timber rattlesnake coiled in the leaves, no doubt resting before making its final push to the den. Okay, back to the top of the ridge and back in time. So after finding the first litter, I went to the higher main gestating structure. I encountered some familiar faces, but no more babies. I returned to the area several days later, and this time with a good friend in tow. And this time I'm not alone. I have brought with me a very good friend and author, John Kepminster. Now John was fundamental in getting my book published, and I will always be very grateful uh, for that. And we haven't been out in the field with one another for quite some time, so it's been a real treat uh, catching up. Hopefully uh, there's more babies this time around, but we still at least have that one litter that we can check out. But if John, you want to say a couple words or? Yeah, this is the second time I've been here. Um, I couldn't find my way back here if it wasn't for Mark. And the last time we found snakes, and of course because Mark came here and led me here, we found snakes again. And that's a guarantee just about when you're in the field with Mark. Well, yeah. most of the time, <laughs> or the lucky times. But um, we're going to get to it, and we're going to start searching, and hopefully we can find even more babies this time. Unfortunately, no additional litters were found, but I was able to get some more time lapse of the first litter. The black gravid female we have encountered several times now, a bit lower down underneath that large slab of granite, may just have some surprises waiting for me on my next visit. Days later, I returned to the lower ridge and was greeted with cool, wet conditions, a sure sign that early autumn was finally here. Okay, it is a week later, September 10. Uh, just ran up here trying to avoid these rain showers and if you recognize we're coming up to that first birthing rock or potential birthing rock just dating rock they could have moved to a different spot to actually give birth I don't see anything I spoke too soon there's a baby oh, there's uh, several babies So naturally, I set up a camera on time lapse to capture the babies coming back out. Right 
here we go, coming up to the main spot. I see a couple of adults here. Okay, so no neonates underneath this main structure, unfortunately. We do have about two or three gravid snakes here and three or four other individuals that are not gravid females. And I ran back down to the rock where we had found that first litter a couple weeks ago, and there is actually a gravid timber rattlesnake underneath there as well. So we still have a half a dozen, perhaps, gravid timber rattlesnakes still on this ridge that I have not given birth. So unfortunately, I probably will not be able to make it back out here and see um, these new litters. All right, so despite the fact that I was not able to go back out and find more litters, I still thoroughly enjoyed sharing these recent field outings with all of you. Thanks. <laughs>